What's up guys? I hope you're all doing well and thank you so much for popping into this video where I review Spider-Man 2, which is returning to theaters for one night only. Guess what? This movie I already reviewed on the channel. When did I review it? I don't know, a couple years ago. I've seen this movie more than a dozen times, so I was like, should I wait until after I see it or should I put this, you know, video up before I see it? Regardless, I've seen this movie a thousand times, so revisiting it in the theater, I am very excited to do, and that happens tonight, which is Monday Night Spider Mondays, as they're calling it. Look, Spider-Man 2 is a film that, you know, I grew up with the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies, among other things, but particularly I grew up with Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2 on a VHS tape. I don't know where that tape is. But I had it on a VHS, and man, I just remember sitting there continuously watching this and the first one, which I wasn't able to see last week uh, in theaters. But I am, I made sure that I'd be seeing this because Spider Man 2 is one of my top five favorite films of all time. This movie is, along with The Dark Knight, my favorite superhero film. Uh, you know, they're tied for first place. Some days I say The Dark Knight is my favorite. Some days I say Spider-Man 2. Um, and to see that, I'm very excited to see this again in theaters. I have brief memories, glimpses, really, of, you know, sitting in the theater in 2004 with my parents watching this movie. Now, I don't remember a lot, but I can remember glimpses i just have that in my brain which was very special and to be able to see this again on the big screen i mean the 4k blu-ray of this is terrific i mean it looks fantastic so to be able to hear this in a nice big surround sound system i really can't wait but but you know here i i just wanted to talk about it again spider-man 2 look this is an incredible film this is such a Great character study on Peter Parker and Otto Octavius. Look, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man films, I think, are remembered a lot due to their their villains. And, you know, maybe not as much Spider-Man 3. I think you could say Sandman is pretty good, but the other two maybe not. I don't know. But I think that Green Goblin from the first film, which Willem Dafoe gives probably one of the best superhero villain performances of all time, a movie villain performance. Like, look, you've got Heath Ledger in The Dark Knight. You've got Alfred Molina as Doc Ock. Willem Dafoe as Green Goblin. And then you could say, like, Josh Brolin as Thanos. Tom Hiddleston as Loki, which he's not even a villain anymore, but when he was, uh, those were the top tier, you know. And particularly... Otto Octavius, Doc Ock. You know, I love the character design of Doc Ock. Now, look, I've played the Spider-Man 2000... Uh, what was it? 17, 2018, the PS4 game that came out. Uh, love Doc Ock. Love the character. But the character design of Alfred Molina, the voice of Alfred Molina, I just think is iconic for me in particular, and I was really excited to get this action figure that you're seeing an image of right now. Uh, the Marvel Legends, is that what it's called? The Doc Ock from Spider-Man 2. The only difference is he's got a shirt on. And in the film, he's, he doesn't have a shirt under the coat. But um, that's just a nitpick, I guess. The figure looks incredible, and he's sitting on my desk right now. But, you know, his arc in the film to where we we see him as this optimistic guy who really wants to achieve his goal and he's working with Oscorp and something goes wrong and his wife is killed and now he has to deal with it with these damn arms on the back of his body and the little piece that his brain was able to control them is is now destroyed so the artificial intelligence of the arms start to take hold over his brain which turns him into the evil Doc Ock. You know, great story, and it was done so well. The scene when he's standing there after he escapes the hospital, uh, and he's standing in the what's 
you know, going to be where he creates the new machine with the tritium and all that. But where he's standing there and he's like, my Rosie is dead. My dream is dead. And he's, and he's talking to himself and he's really down. And he's like, I should be at the bottom of the river with these monstrous things. And then all of a sudden they start to get a life of their own and a personality of their own. And they take, take hold of him in that scene where he's like, the power of the sun in the palm of my hand. Nothing will stand in our way. Nothing. Now that is a little cheesy. And look, there's cheese in these films. I don't mind the cheese. Sam Raimi's known for it, you know, and it's, it's not like it takes over the film. It's just like another flair, some other flavor to the film. I think the movie has some great music. Danny Elfman's score is really incredible in this film. And the characters, too. I really appreciate what they did with, you know, Mary Jane in this film, how she's, you know, following her career and how Peter Parker might not be able to be there for her as much as she'd like. Because, look, he's he's... He's going to college. He's trying to work as a pizza delivery guy at the beginning of the film, which is a great sequence. You know, he's trying to do all these things and balance being Spider-Man at the same time. And this film puts him to the test where he realizes, I can't do it. Or I don't know how to do it. I'm not ready to do it. So he he, he drops, the, drops the mask in the trash and he, and he goes off and, you know, starts to live a normal life again. When, you know, eventually he's called to be Spider-Man again. When MJ is abducted by Otto Octavius. And, you know, once, once he sees her in danger, he realizes where his priorities are. I need to protect this person. And his vision comes back. He drops the glasses. Um, there's so many great sequences in this movie. And if you want to talk about a great sequence, I think the sequence with Aunt May when she's sorting through her stuff because she's going to move and they're outside and she talks to him. She just has so many great lines and quotes in that speech to where it's one of the best scenes in a motion picture I've ever seen. I mean, just her, her speech is terrific and then how it all kind of comes around at the end of the film where they're they're having their fight doc ock i'm talking about so spidey comes over and he and he brings what otto said to him in the beginning of the film about you know uh a privilege and uh you know intelligence and all that and how to use it for the good of mankind and all that and he's like these arms have turned you into something you're not don't listen to them and he finally gets control over himself again. He says, listen to me. And then he does the ultimate thing, the ultimate sacrifice, where, where Peter's like, hey, what are we going to do? You know, what are we going to do about this? He's like, the river, drown it. Spider tries to go do it, and he takes him, and he says, no, I'll do it. This is what I need to do to, to, to be at peace with myself. And the score that plays in that scene, Rado gets up, and he, and, he, and he goes towards the tritium and, you know, the, the, the look that he, he gives back at Peter as Peter looks at him. Just the music in that scene. My God, it's so powerful. It's like, I will not die a monster. And he didn't. He died a good man. He saved the, saved the city, uh, which was going to hell. Then I'm just thinking off the top of my head why I love this film and why this is such a great movie. Um... Yeah, I mean, the, let's just talk about two more things. The train scene, the fight, one of the best fight sequences ever put to film. It's incredible. And the scene right before that, not even a scene, but a, a sequence to where Peter, he gets his suit back and you see the, the, the J. Jonah Joan Jameson, I want Spider-Man, the paper says, he's back. And Spidey swings through and he swings through and the score is so triumphant. And as the camera pans back, we then go through Otto's lenses of his glasses as we now see Otto. The camera then pans, we see Spidey go into the same building. I mean, that whole bit 
you don't see things like that in, in any film hardly these days. I mean, the, the, the artistry and the way that Danny Elfman also did the music to where you got the Spidey theme and then we go through the glasses, we get Doc Ock's theme. I mean, it's such a beautiful marriage of music and, and cinematography and visual effects. Keep in mind, Spider-Man 2 is the only superhero comic book film to win the Best Visual Effects Oscar. It's the only superhero movie to do it. You might be thinking, well, The Dark Knight won it as well. No, it did not. The Dark Knight was beaten by the curious case of Benjamin Button back in 2008, the early 2009 Academy Awards. Spider-Man 2 is the only film to win Best Visual Effects at the Oscars, which was a superhero film. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's a feat. It is, you know, something that I can't wait to experience with the crowd of people. I mean, I'm sure the place will erupt when he comes swinging through the he's back sequence. I think that's what everybody calls it. He's back as he swings through. We see Otto's, you know, coming out of Otto's lenses as well. This That's one of my favorite bits of any any movie. But um, And the final swing. I mean, God, the, the, the first two Spider-Man films are known for their final swing. And I remember seeing Spider-Man 3 in 2007 being disappointed. There was no final swing at the end of that movie. But the final swing in Spider-Man 2 and the score, I mean, it's just so special. It is so special to me. And, uh, you know, Tobey's suit, the Spider-Man suit, is my favorite Spider-Man suit design. Tobey Maguire is my favorite Spider-Man, not just because I grew up with him, but I just think he's he's the best. He's just, you know, he's 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 awkward when he's Peter Parker. I mean, a lot of the time, even when he's comfortable with his friends some of the time, He's awkward. When he's Spider-Man, he is Spider-Man. I mean, he, he plays it really well, and I don't think people give enough credit, but that's where I'm at. Spider-Man 2 is a 5 out of 5 star movie. Did I leave some stuff out? Yeah. Look, I didn't even mention Harry Osborn. After his father's death in the first film, he's going through some stuff in this, and now what's going on with the tritium, that's all gone to crap. He put his, put his faith in Otto Octavius. The whole thing went to crap. So throughout the whole film, he wants Spider-Man. By the end of the film, he gets him. But I don't think he's too happy to find out who he is. I mean, just the whole, the whole bit. The, the scene where Otto becomes Doc Ock. The, the arms get put into his back. And that whole sequence where the thing starts to malfunction. I just think it was so well done. And his, and his wife... She's not in the movie a lot, but in the beginning of the film, when we see her, it's like, you know what? I believe these two. She's talking about how they met, and it's just like, you know what? I'm in. I'm, I'm buying it instantly. The poetry stuff, how'd you guys feel about the poetry stuff? I don't mind. It was advice from Otto Octavius. Feed her poetry. Guess what? Why wouldn't he try it? Her hair was like the sunshine or whatever it is. Man, if you go see Spider-Man 2 in theaters, I just want to say I hope you have a great time. To see this on the big screen, I'm very excited. I'm posting this today, the Monday before. Uh, I'll be seeing it later. So that's where we're at with that. Guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'm going to have a review for Star Wars, Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Did I also review that on the channel uh, prior? Yes, I did. Probably in 2015, before The Force Awakens came out. So it'll be nice to go back down memory lane with that one. It's getting a 25th anniversary re-release. And also, look, our new release film's coming out. We're going to have reviews for Arthur the King, Monkey Man, Love Lies Bleeding, a bunch of exciting stuff on the way, and Challengers as well. Going to be actually seeing that in theaters. Very excited to do so. You guys, you can follow me on Twitter and or X at RyanKing72, and Instagram and TikTok at KingArises131. And thank you so much for watching my review for Spider-Man 2, which is celebrating its 20th anniversary, and I just think it's really special to have Spider-Man 2 and Shrek 2 playing in theaters the same day. I mean, <laughs> really, it's like a blast from the past. So thank you guys so much, and we'll see you in the next one. Over and out.